what is rds rds stands for respiratory distress syndrome the correct term used for these patients is respiratory distress syndrome respiratory distress syndrome remember and this is the mcq one liner need super specialty 2019 most common cause of distress in preterm and low birth weight newborns any other name of rds yes there is another name of rds we call it as hmd what is hmd hmd stands for hyaline membrane disease but hyaline membrane disease is a less popular name there is a hyaline membrane which forms in the alveoli but it appears only in severe long standing rds and it is not indicative of the pathophysiology of the disease so the term R rds is preferred over hmd but still you need to remember that rds and hmd are sometimes synonymously used they are the same condition and what is the cause of rds the cause of rds is deficiency of surfactant so the cause is deficiency of surfactant in patients of rds now you, there is a fact you need to know that in case of term neonates in case of term babies the surfactant pool in the alveoli is about 100 mg per kg body weight whereas in preterm babies it is average 10 times less that is 10 mg per kg and it is even lesser the younger the child lesser is the surfactant pool this is the amount of surfactant pool which has been described in the aims protocol so they can ask you as a fact based thing what is the surfactant pool as you can well imagine the amount of surfactant in alveoli is 10 times less and so there is a higher chance of progressive alveolar collapse if it is a preterm child and surfactant is less in the patient so how what is the pathophysiology now pathophysiology can be explained in multiple ways i will be showing a chart also the chart taken from nelson but i want you to understand in a more simplified manner here what i am going to write is a handmade chart this is based upon aims protocol nelson as well as cloverty right so let us try to understand what happens in patients of rds there is deficiency of surfactant because of this there is progressive alveolar collapse progressive means it will not happen that suddenly all alveoli collapse there will be a gradual progression of the alveolar collapse if there is progressive alveolar collapse three things will happen first of all there will be increased work of breathing increased work of breathing which will produce tachypnea chest retractions etc and this will lead to the development of respiratory fatigue in the patient so this will cause respiratory fatigue in the patient right second thing in that baby second there will be development of progressive alveolar collapse will lead to decreased diffusion of the carbon dioxide leading to hypercapnia leading to hypercapnia so there will be progressive rise in the carbon dioxide levels in the arterial blood and thirdly there will be progressive alveolar collapse will lead to hypoxia as well as atelectasis whenever there will be atelectasis initially there will be patchy atelectasis that is collapse and then there will be diffuse atelectasis of the lung segments this atelectasis will do two things this will cause ventilation perfusion mismatch and simultaneously the hypoxia and atelectasis will also cause increase in the right to left shunt across the ductus arteriosus as well as foramen ovale remember it is a preterm newborn and they are still open in the first few hours of life and this increased right to left shunt will actually worsen the hypoxia happening in the patient so this will worsen the hypoxia happening in the patient this ventilation perfusion mismatch and hypoxia which is happening what it will further cause is that this ventilation perfusion mismatch will cause the release of inflammatory mediators inflammatory mediators in the body leading to multi organ dysfunction so multi organ dysfunction in the form of shock will develop in the child in case of untreated cases and this ventilation perfusion mismatch is also causing another problem ventilation is not, not happening perfusion is happening so it will cause alveolar damage so there will be alveolar cellular damage so not only type 2 cells type 1 cells will also get damaged and because of that there will be exudation of there will be exudation of proteinaceous substances fibrin and debris into the alveolar lumen leading to the development of hyaline membrane that is why we call it as 
hyaline membrane disease and hyaline membrane itself is going to cause inactivation of surfactant it causes inactivation of surfactant now you might be thinking ki sir has made it already very complicated no i have not made it complicated but to understand rds why the factors are happening why the things are happening this flow chart is needed trust me examiner is not going to ask you in the exam to make the pathophysiology but this is the basis this is why all these things are happening so if you see there will be respiratory increased work of breathing in the form of tachypnea and chest retraction uh, if you don't support give respiratory support there will be worsening of the distress because there is progressive alveolar collapse and respiratory fatigue also happening when you do silverman anderson scoring system when you follow there will be progressive increase in the score indicating worsening of the distress then when you do abg you will find hypercapnia you will find hypoxia and in long standing untreated patients you will have hypoxia leading to cyanosis cyanosis keeps on getting worsened because of increased right to left shunt also which is happening because of hypoxia plus there will be development of shock and multi organ dysfunction will be responsible for death in the patient in late presenting cases even if you give surfactant they may not respond to uh, to surfactant therapy in fact hyaline membrane and the debris and inflammation which is happening they cause inactivation of the surfactant also understand so that is the pathophysiology i know it is it is a bit cluttered but uh, listening to it two times is good enough if you get an mcq it will make it easy for you to answer in the exam now coming to the treatment of rds the treatment basically comprises four components what are the four components the first component will be supportive care the first component will be supportive care supportive care will require uh, starting iv fluids second will be temperature management and third will be monitoring you will monitor the vitals you will monitor for shock you will monitor spo2 preductal spo2 is preferred and you will also do respiratory monitoring respiratory monitoring there is a separate dedicated video in details i have discussed so silverman anderson score is the one which is generally used in such patients secondly you will start with the definite management as a part of definite management the second part is respiratory support so you will try to give respiratory support in the patient what is the initial therapy to be started the initial therapy is always given in the form of humidified oxygen along with cpap oxygen i am writing plus minus cpap because we do start humidified oxygen but in vast majority of the patients the response is suboptimal so cpap generally needs to be started after cpap you will shift the patient if the patient is not improving you can shift the patient to so step wise management is done not improving nippv still not improving you need to intubate and give mechanical ventilation during mechanical ventilation we initially start with the conventional ventilation using simv mode later on you can shift to hfov mode as well and finally if uh, all else fails all fails you can consider if it is available ecmo but these patients will have a very poor outcome third part what was the reason for the disease surfactant was not there so if you give surfactant that is called as surfactant replacement therapy in short it is written as srt surfactant is given intratracheally directly into the trachea and there are multiple techniques which have been described the gold standard technique is inshore technique there are also the newer techniques known as lisa as well as mist technique and among the newer techniques lisa technique is being increasingly followed it does not require intubation only a catheter use is good enough more about it we will discuss uh, separately and fourthly you will have managing the complications this will be needed in patients who present late or who are already into advanced respiratory failure or shock so these are the four components of rds